Hi guys and welcome back to the channel and the heater, Vivor heater installation. This is going to be part two and this is actually going to be the installation part of the video. There's been some change of plans as well. You know I said that I was going to put this unit outside. Well after close consideration, do you say that? Uh, I have chosen not to do that. And it primarily has to do with the fact that I didn't really take condensation into account when I said that I was going to put it outside. So the problem that I'm imagining here is that, let's say I bring a car in here, the garage is hot, the car is full of snow, it's frozen, I bring it in here overnight, it's going to start melting off, it's going to get very humid in here, and then the next day maybe I want to bring the heat up again, so I'll turn this baby on, and then it's going to start sucking in that cold, humid, wet air into the pipes here in order to send it outside to the heating unit. And I think I would run into a lot of condensation issues. And I don't think it's just gonna work very good, especially not in the winter when this is supposed to be used. Because it might be, you know, 20 degrees Celsius below freezing outside. First of all, I don't know how this thing would perform in those temperatures, probably not very good. And I would get a lot of condensation issues when the hot inside air from inside here uh, hits the inside of this pipe and then we have 20 degrees Celsius below outside and I don't want to insulate all the pipes because that's because that would add too much to the cost of this entire project. So I'm just going to do what is tried and true. We're going to send the exhaust out through the wall. I'm sorry to disappoint some of you. Maybe all were, maybe some of you were looking forward to seeing uh, this alternative, uh, but it's not going to happen because of those reasons. I was thinking probably the best place where it wouldn't be in the way of things is over here by the corner. I don't ever have anything over here except the engines. And I could just move those over a little bit. It wouldn't really hurt me. And we also have a hole in the wall here already. So, although I think it's kind of an odd dimension. Yeah, it is. It is one of those small ones. So that kind of sucks. So what we can do is just upgrade to that because we need to kind of isolate this so that we don't get, you know, the heat into, into this because I think this burns pretty good. So we need to upgrade this hole a little bit. I wonder how we're going to do that. Hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's get the drill. Yeah, let's start there. Yeah, I got no steering here now, so I don't know how this is gonna work, but. Ho oh, ho, that went incredibly smooth. I am very surprised of that. I thought it was gonna wander all over the wall, but I guess not. Well, here we go, that's a hole. All right, so now the plan is to run one of these guys into the wall like that, and same on the other side. Uh, so we get everything enclosed in steel, you know, something like that. We'll have the same story on the outside. And then we'll pull the hot exhaust gases through here, and then we'll line this thing with uh, like heat protection, like you have on your manifold. We'll wrap this pipe in that because there's a little bit of play here. So we should be able to get the pipe in anyway. All right, so let's see how thick these walls actually are. Okay, it's 23 and a half. 23 and a half.
looks okay, right? That looks pretty flame proof. I know that these gaskets in here are good enough for 150 degrees Celsius. The exhaust pipe is not gonna be, it's not gonna be lying like that. So it's gonna be in the middle and then we'll have heat protection around that pipe. So it's definitely not gonna have 150 degrees uh, on the outside here. All right, so let's wrap this thing up. Not really sure how much I'll need. That should be good. Now you want to go and make this wet. You don't want to work with this when it's dry because it'll get all over the place. It's very itchy. I know it's a little bit messy here today, guys. I'm pretty short on time this week. Got a lot going on. Dang it. Hmm. Well. That up. I completely forgot about the fact that it needs to be about 50% overlap. All right, let's get rid of that. Start over. And if you're wondering, no, I've never used this stuff before. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and tie this up. I don't have anything better than steel wire today, but I guess we'll have to do. Uh, I would advise using maybe hose clamps or those nice stainless steel. Uh, zip ties. All right, so let's, uh, let's see if this fits in the wall. So this should fit. All right, so I managed to get uh, a little bit of something like this welded up together. Let me show you. All right, so we got, yeah, it's not much for the world. And uh, basically a pipe, 25 millimeters. And we got some, uh, I think it's two millimeter steel uh, on top of the, yeah, I got a little warped when I welded it. I'm not a professional welder, but it's all right. Should be tight enough. Uh, anyway, what we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna wrap so we're gonna wrap the stuff up in heat shield and uh, put a hose clamp, hose clamp, and hopefully that'll be enough. I, I think that will be plenty. That means we have insulation on the pipe itself. We have insulation on that other pipe that's in the wall. I have a hard time thinking that, you know, anything's gonna catch on fire. Uh, the only thing basically missing from this is the uh, muffler. Uh, kind of forgot about that, to be honest, but if it becomes a problem, we'll just cut this off. We'll put the muffler on here. This will be on the outside. Uh, so we'll get that on there. Uh, when you're trying, this is 25 millimeters. So this hose should fit on here, but obviously it doesn't, not at all. But if you take the underside of the heater, you have two inlets. You have this one, which is for the intake, and then you have this one, which is the exhaust. Now the exhaust pipe is gonna fit really nice on there, no problems, but it's not gonna fit on the intake. But what you, can, what you can do is you can force it on here, and then that will give you a little bit of a cone shape. All right, so now that'll fit on the intake. But not only that, it will also fit the one inch exhaust pretty snugly like so. So yeah, that's a good tip. If you're, you know, 25 millimeters is pretty standard piping. So you wanna get this hose or <laughs> tube on there, just use the intake pipe of the heater to kinda make it bigger. Put a little hole in here. So what I'm doing now is drilling just a tiny hole up here so that I can let the condensation out that will probably form uh, in between here because we're gonna seal this up. So yeah, you wanna be able to have it breathe. That's 
that's a great drill bit. I'll make sure to save that over here so that I can do that again. Here we go. Right now, I just wanna see that everything works before we uh, seal anything up. How we're gonna do this. Which way are we gonna put the heater and how high are we gonna put it? I wanna try to use as much of the exhaust heat as I can. So I wanna try to keep this as long as I can. So I'll probably bend it right there and we'll fold it straight up and then we'll put the heater somewhere at this level. Uh, I can't really decide if I'm gonna point the exhaust of the heat this way or this way. Because I, I will be putting it into uh, ducts later. I mean, I guess it makes sense to send it in the corner and up, but yeah, then I get the display that way. Uh, how far away from the wall are we gonna get? So we might get something like, like such. Mm, yeah. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it right now, but something like that, I would say. It's probably pretty good. All right. That's going to go on there. And then we'll have the heater. Of course, the heater is going to be on these. So it's going to be out from the wall a little bit. Don't want it too close. Or maybe I'll put it like that. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I'm itching because of the, the heat insulation gotten everywhere. Something like that, perhaps. Yeah, maybe it would make more sense to have it against the wall. Now I got all the space in the world to get that. Yeah, we'll put it like that. That makes more sense. Just makes more sense. Put a little something like that. So the CC measurement here is 39. 39-ish, 39 39-ish. 39 that looks good. One right there, one right there. Bim, bada boom. For the clamps, we're not gonna use those that were included in the kit. So I got these uh, off of a separate store and they're a little bit more robust. They're also stainless, just as this pipe is. Well, I think it is anyway. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and use those instead. All right, so we got the heater on the wall. Now we gotta connect it to the mains. I think that's what you say, connect it to the mains, to the power of the house. Uh, anyway, I would advise if you don't know what you're doing, get an electrician. If you don't know what you're doing, it's on your own risk. I would say don't do this at all. Like just completely leave this to an electrician. And I'm gonna go ahead and do it myself, but I'm not gonna cover it in too much detail. All right, so uh, let's get started on that. All right, so we're gonna have to cheat a little bit here. So it starts out brilliantly with the electrics. I don't have enough wire because at the same time I'm doing this, I wanna redistribute uh, the phases a little bit. So I got way too much stuff in here on phase one. So 
so I need to move a few things over to phase two, but that means I need to catch some power down at the corner there, and I don't have enough wire to run it from there to here, which was the idea. So just for demonstration's sake, we're gonna be connecting this guy just straight to this outlet right here. And we'll just run this on L1 just for demonstration. And I will pick up some more wire tomorrow. All right. I think that for the first run here, we're gonna go ahead and take the cover off. So I kinda wanna see what happens. All right, so we're gonna start with priming this unit. And apparently you push these two at the same time. Okay, so I guess there are two variants, according to the comments. So if you push these two, uh, maybe that'll fix it. Oh crap, here we go. All right. Nice. So you gotta hold the buttons all the time. And it's the arrow up and the arrow down. Just keep holding them. And that'll prime the pump. I'm getting ready to fire this thing up. Let's just plug it in and see what happens. Let's just push some buttons. All right, let's put that in there. It says it's 13 degrees because I forgot to turn the uh, heater on last night. So that's probably pretty true. And we're just gonna hit start here. H3, sounds good to me. Oh, great. So we got an error code right away. Uh, E2, what does that mean? I don't know, it's blinking a battery sign, so I'm guessing the power unit is a little bit too weak. Yeah, it drops the voltage pretty quickly. I don't know why that is. Is it pulling too many amps? Is that it? All right, so we got it in current. It's hooked in series. Let's fire this thing up and see. Yeah. So got one amp, two amps, three amps, four amps, five amps, and then it cuts it off. And it's supposed to do eight and a half. Uh, maybe there's something with this type of, uh, maybe you can't use this type of driver, maybe you need something else. Maybe I'm just not good enough at electronics to understand why. Um, but yeah, it doesn't work. We're gonna need another type of transformer, unfortunately. So, where do we go from here? So this right here is the battery pack to my kid's uh, four-wheeler. It's got an electric four-wheeler. So, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and steal that. This is a pretty simple unit. It's not lifting a mine or anything like that, but it should be enough to power this thing, definitely. And it's quite small as well, so it should be just perfect. It's got, yes, yeah, so we're dealing with 12 volt here. That's great, it's been charged because it's been sitting on charge, you know, over the winter here. So it's nice and fresh. Let's just get, make some connectors here up to here and then we'll just hook a battery charger on there. All right, so now we got a battery on there instead. Where's the fire extinguisher?
Well, would you look at that? It is running. It is definitely running, but it is definitely very, very loud. My goodness, that is loud. Sounds like an airplane starting up in here. Wow, that is hot. That is, that is really hot, folks. All right, so I managed to find one of these. So it's at 15.5, it's dangling right here in the middle of the room. So let's see uh, how quickly we can get up to 20. So right now, what time is it? 9.27 right now, and it's at 15.5 degrees. So uh, let's see how long is this gonna take to get it up to uh, 20 degrees in here. That pump is disconnected right there. Yeah. It's going at full full pudding right now. So let's see. All right, 20 degrees, look at that, 2212. And I'm just dying to shut this thing off because it is, it is so smelly in here. My goodness, all right. See, we got, we've burnt up quite a lot of diesel there. Still very, very warm. Oh crap, looks like we had one more level on that thing, oh well. Go ahead and turn that off. This is gonna have to run down a little bit. All right. Pretty pleased with that. Just gotta solve this whole uh, power issue that we've got. I refuse to have a battery and a battery charger. We gotta fix this. I'm gonna go ahead and replace this thing with something else. That is probably a little bit more uh, dumb. I think that this thing is a little bit too smart. So, uh, yeah, I got a usage for this anyway. This is an LED driver. So I'm planning on putting LEDs all around the house here. So I'll definitely get some use out of that anyway, but it is a little bit unfortunate. Anyway, that's it for me today. And uh, see you guys in the next video. Are you good? Hi.